Hello and welcome to the Fabulous Food Finds guided tasting to go with um, 2023's spring tasting box. Um, just a quick one about me, my name is Katie Truss and I'm your host, the owner of Fabulous Food Finds. Um, I grew up in pubs and restaurants so food has always been a big part of my life. My a la carte kitchen was my favourite toy growing up. Um, I um, have worked for the BBC Good Food Shows for over 15 years now. Um, I was employed by them and then 10 years ago I moved up to North Norfolk um, and started my own business, Fabulous Food Finds, the aim of which is to share lots of my finds with people like you. Um, so the tasting box I, I launched a year ago um, and that was my way of actually bringing to life my enthusiasm for food and drink producers and their amazing products and I thought the best way of doing that is actually not just talking about them and saying oh go and try this it sounds really nice but actually hey here's a box with 10 to 15 products in it that I love um, that I hope you'll love too so today we are going to whiz our way through 15 products um, which I hope you will really enjoy. So you have inside your box a menu of sorts uh, with a list of the products on them. So last night um, we hosted a live guided tasting. So kind of like this in my living room um, with a, a group of, of subscribers to the box and also some of producers as well. So you won't see the producers on this call, but I will um, put links to their small little sections where they've done a tasting so you can listen to them and meet them because it really does help to actually see something. And one of the guys um, creates this um, Cornish Seaberry juice drink and he was out on the in the orchard and then we saw his lambs. It was really lovely. So um, it's worth a watch. So, right, I'm going to go through the, the list here in order. So we are going to start with Bow Tree's sun-dried tomato powder. So if you like sun-dried tomatoes, you will love this versatile ingredient. So it's a tin of powder. Um, Bow Tree Farm are my go-to spice um, experts, pepper, spice, seasoning. So I suppose this isn't really a spice, but it smells amazing. It is this gorgeous, sweet, savoury, warm, tomatoey um, powder. So really, really versatile. So whenever you want to add a tomatoey boost to anything, whether that's like a, to a tomato pasta sauce, a bolognese, um, just plain tomatoes. If they haven't got a lot of flavour, sprinkle this over. Um, what else do you to do with it? BBC Good Food have this awesome recipe for chicken arabatia stew with parmesan dumplings and it calls for a sun-dried tomato pesto and this would make a really good substitute for that. Um, uh, yeah, tasting notes, herbal, sweet, tangy, umami. It's made with um, Turkish tomatoes on the Aegean coast, so gorgeous, imagine them all out in um, sun-dried drying in the sun, um, and then dried into a really handy powder. And um, at the BBC Good Future, where I host a tasting theatre, I put this into the mystery tasting, and everyone's like, oh, wow! And then um, it's been sold out for a while, so I thought it'd be amazing to put this into the box. And um, uh, not only do you get this te uh, guided tasting, but um, the private Facebook um, tasting club literally just the people that get the boxes you can share some of your recipes and ideas in there so um if you do something interesting give it give some other people some ideas basically so yeah bow trees sun-dried tomato powder right next up is the balazu esme meze so i wanted to include something that you could literally just eat now um so this is a spiky sea turp spicy Turkish paste with tomatoes, peppers and pomegranate molasses. Um, Esme in Turkish means mixed, um, to mix, so this is like a mixed up kind of salsa. Um, it's quite rich with oil as well, so it's sweet, it's a bit tangy. Um, they suggest um, adding to grains, um, adding to a dressing or 
um, with bread topped with feta. So imagine that, just spread it on your bread, put it some feta and then maybe um, put it under the grill, but really gorgeous flavor. Um, perfect for like anti-pasty if you're, you've got like a charcuterie platter, cheeses, you know, that kind of thing. Breadsticks just dip in there. Really, really tasty and delicious. Suresme Meze, then also from Balazu. Now, um, these guys are available in the supermarket. Um, I generally tend to stick to sort of like harder to find artisan food and drink, but I thought having a mix would be really good because if you like it, it's really easy to buy it again, hopefully. Um, so this is Balazu's Pea and Mint Pesto. So it is still a basil base, um, but then it's got lovely fresh peas and mint, so lends itself well to going with lamb, asparagus, um, fish as well. Um, so the other thing that they suggest to do with this is just um, add to pasta, obviously like a normal pasta pesto. It's really delicious, um, and I hope you like that one. Done. Cool, right, I've got to be remembered to be fast, be fast, focus. Uh, cool, so the next one is Britzels. Now, everyone loved these on the guided tasting last night and I have to say, I don't have any left of my own because I love them so much. So these are big, chunky pieces of baked sourdough pretzel um, and then they're coated in this brown sugar, um, butter, cinnamon, um, a little bit of garlic powder as well, so they're a bit savoury, a bit smoky. Um, and then the to finish, there's a cayenne, um, cayenne pepper at the end, so a little bit of chilli heat, really delicious. Um, Beth, the owner of this, is an American um, living in Oxford, and she suggests putting them with peanut butter, cream cheese, melted chocolate, and on their website there's a recipe for a sweet potato dip as well, which sounds really good. Um, so they're the Britzels. They also do them in uh, like a, an original salt flavor, but the cinnamon kicks, so good. Uh, cool, so then we have Honest Beans. So if you haven't seen these guys before, this is a British brand of roasted fava beans. So fava beans grow in the UK. Um, this company started out making hummus with them, but obviously fresh hummus is quite hard to sell. And if you don't have lots of supermarket listings, things like that, it's really hard to make a sustainable business. So they roast them in their own Yorkshire rapeseed oil because it's part of the same farm, her farming family. And then um, they're coated, this one is barbecue flavor, but they also do sea salt, sea salt, um, a cider vinegar and salt, and then a chili and lemon flavour as well. They're really high in protein, they've got fibre, um, they're vegan friendly, pretty sure they're gluten free as well, but just check that just in case I made that up. Um, but yeah, high in protein and fibre, really good for you, really tasty and um, nice alternative to crisps or nuts. So that's Honest Bean, Roasted Fava Beans from the... Um, yeah, the Honest Bean Company. Cool, right, Louise's Honey. So, you have these two little jars of honey in your box. Um, I couldn't put the big jars in because um, there's only so much I can buy for the boxes to make it work out financially. Um, so, you've got a, the green one is a coriander honey. Um, and just to confirm, so that doesn't mean that there's been coriander added to the honey. It means that the bees that have been foraging have um, collected pollen from coriander flowers. And this one is a Bosco honey. And Bosco, these, these are both Italian honeys. That's their kind of speciality, pure Italian honey. So the Bosco is a woodland honey. And the bees have been foraging on like pine um, and um, other sort of like woodland tree tree um, uh, flowers and things like that. So very, very different flavour profiles and very, very different kind of colours. This one's more of a set honey, so um, the coriander would be great on toast or try with some pink grapefruit. And then the Bosco honey, it always tastes almost malty. I, it reminded me of malt extract that my mum used to give me when I was a little girl. Um, it's got very different kind of ooh, flavour profile and is a runnier honey. Um, now sometimes if you ever use, um, if you ever get Manuka honey, you might see like a rating on it, like a scale, which is the antibac antibacterial scale. 
this is simplified by the way, um, but basically it means how strong it is in terms of its antibacterial properties. Now the Bosco honey is a 15 plus, um, I'm not sure which the, the, which the, the coriander one is, but basically if you're, um, you know, not feeling very well, honey and lemon, really good for you. They're antibiotic, they're antibacterial, antiviral, so really, really good for you. Um, I'll link to the tasting as well that we did with Louise's honey um, online. So have a look at that video where they talk us through the honeys because that's really interesting to see. Um, and these are the bigger jars, that's how they normally sell them. So that's your two honeys. Oh, and a little tip on tasting the honey. So um, if you, a professional honey taste, um, sommelier, they call it, there are such things as honey sommeliers, um, like a wine sommelier. So you put it into your mouth and then you must hold your nose while you taste it. So first of all, you'll get the, the basic kind of like taste um, uh, profile. So you'll get the sweet and you might get some bitter and salt and umami. That's your... Um, tastes in your mouth um, and then if you release your nostrils you'll get the other kind of like the the, the um, complex flavour profile so you'll get kind of um, maybe some floral like the maltiness from them um, as in M-A-L-T malt malt <laughs> that's my Essex accent coming out there sorry malt um, so yeah give those a try um, cool, so the next one we're going to is the Cornish Sea Berry Company. Now give me two secs, I've left it in the fridge. Sorry, I've got my radiator behind me. Um, so this is... Vitamin C from the Cornish Sea Berry Company and these bright orange little berries are called sea buckthorns, um, naturally bursting with vitamin C, so super, super healthy. Um, Seth Pesco, who is the owner of this company, um, again, he did a little vid video to, um, for us, so I'm going to put that onto YouTube so you can see the, the actual um, sea buckthorn berry orchard um, down in Cornwall. Um, he's blended this with apple juice because they are super sour. Um, my sister and I actually foraged for sea buckthorn berries once um, about 10 years ago because they grow here on the North Norfolk coast as well. Um, really, really hard to um, forage for them because the, the bushes are really, really spiky. Um, and then when you pick the berries, they burst and they're really acidic and they really smell um but they're really tasty and this is so good for you um he was um um i think he was climbing mount everest and he got really bad altitude sickness and the sherpa said hey drink this and it was um sea buck on berry and um it cured it um very cool very delicious very healthy Puckett's Pickles. So I'm not a mega horseradish lover, but just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not an amazing product and that I shouldn't share it. So this is Puckett's Pickles horseradish sauce with gin. Um, now, uh, if you have a look at this, it's quite a, it's not a creamed horseradish. So um, it's, it hasn't got, there's, you know, there's no fat in there. Um, and great with roast beef, um, great in a Bloody Mary. And I also started reading up um, on some of the other pairings. I've got this really cool book um, called The Flavour Thesaurus. Um, and um, Nikki suggests putting it into a bacon sandwich. So if you like horseradish, mix that with a bit of mayo and try that in a bacon sandwich and tell me how it is. Um, but Puckett's Pickles, they make some incredible pickles. And this is their horseradish sauce with gin. Right. Da, 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 da. Chocolate Society. Next one. So how beautiful is this caramelised milk chocolate? Caramelised milk, milk chocolate. Um, so um, the Chocolate Society I came across on a mystery tasting with Jennifer Earle. Um, they do bars like this, they do some posh Maltesers, they also do incredible filled chocolates like bonbons. 
Um, and oh, some of the flavours were amazing. So I thought, let's have a nice introduction to these guys. They do lots of different flavours. Obviously, it's tempting to go for a really dark bar. Um, but actually, this one is really sweet, comforting, really gorgeous milk chocolate. Um, so the way they describe it, swathes of sumptuous caramel give this 39% cocoa chocolate a deeply enticing edge. Um, inspired by fond memories of steaming sticky toffee pudding, I get definitely that kind of like caramelly burnt sugar um, and toffee apples. It's, it's, it is addictive as it is refined and I don't have any of this left to taste. This is my empty, empty packet. Um, I love this one. I found it really gorgeous. Um, and if you like like their chocolate, they do lots of different varieties. Um, so yeah, that's the Chocolate Society's Caramelised Milk Milk Chocolate. Where are we going next? We are going to the tea. So this is from the Karma Tea Co. Um, Alison Tran from this um, company joined us and um, talk, told us all about where this tea is from. So have a look uh, within YouTube and you'll find the links to those videos as well. It's really worth um, finding out a bit more about this because she can tell it so much better than I can. Um, so Karma Tea Co, so it's all about new and forgotten um, teas. Obviously, from Southeast Asia or South Asia. So this is from India, and on the packet you'll see it's from the um, Nilgiri Mountains in South India. So quite near Kerala. Um, this is a black tea. You want to um, brew it just for about three or four minutes. No milk, although she said you can take take milk. Um, it's not super strong, but it's really got lovely floral kind of honey notes. Um, she suggested we might get stone fruit flavours, some citrus in there as well. Um, and it supports some really, you know, like we get with chocolate and coffee, you kind of, you know, the origin, you know, um, you know, potentially the altitude, like where it's from, the grower, and you don't so much with tea, and that's what Alison's trying to do here with the Karma Tea Co. Um, it's called Winter Frost because this particular tea is picked in the winter months after there's been a frost. So I don't know if you notice, but when you when I have like roast parsnips, after a frost, the parsnips always taste sweeter, and it's that frost that kind of I don't know, shocks the plant into, um, I don't know if it releases sugars, I really don't know the science behind it, one thing to do um, is find out, but um, it gives the, the tips a really lovely, unique kind of flavour. Um, and uh, within the, the area they're always like, oh is it cold enough, has there been a frost, and once there has they then go out to pick it. Um, yeah, winter frost from the Karma Tea Co. Ta -da! Now, so next we're going to this flower and white orange chocolate plant-based meringue bar. Um, I thought it'd be really cool to introduce you to flower and white. I've known them since 2009 when they started their business um, and they were the little round cake company, which they literally did make little round um, sort of like the tiny little Victoria sandwiches. Um, then they started making these big marshmallows, uh, not marshmallows, meringues, gorgeous swirled meringues. Um, and then they, their business keeps developing um, and then they started the meringue bars. Then because they're so innovative, they um, started trying to work with some vegan alternatives. And I think I'm really impressed by this. Like I can't, you know, there is a flavour there that isn't exactly the same as egg white but you know if you're a vegan you'd be super happy with that they also do do just like the plain flavors like uh, not plain but non-vegan flavors as well it's all gluten-free really delicious and their whole um whole kind of thing is that they're, they're quite low low in calories as well so it's kind of a guilt-free um indulgence so that's flour and white take a look at them and then we have squished. So these guys are, they started with as a fruit farm and they had a really big problem with the fact that the supermarkets did not want the squished berries or the ones that weren't quite 
big enough, plump enough, um, that kind of thing. So um, they wanted to do something with those waste rather than wasting those berries. Um, so they created flapjacks, which are, um, so these are a blueberry ones, so they're gluten free as well. Um, and it says it rescues 25 blueberries. Um, I really love this flapjack. Um, it's fruity, it's, you know, it's made with real butter as well. And it's got a really nice level of sea salt in there as well. I quite like the salt element, I'm quite into my salt. Um, and then they've got these rescued fruit balls as well. So, um, if you like the kind of like energy kind of side of like, you know, like energy balls. So these have got blueberries, dates, dried apricots, um, agave syrup, some vanilla in there as well. Um, they're vegan approved, they're gluten free. So quite a nice, um, looks like they'd be really good for kids lunch boxes as well, but grown ups fine too. Um, so yeah, squished. That one's rescued 25 blueberries as well. So just here, that's 50 blueberries. Um, I'm going to show you the, blue, uh, the flapjack as well. So as you can see, lots of blueberries in there. Nice little snack. Right, next. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, Thomas Cookie Co. So these guys make the most amazing cookies. These ones are fully loaded. So um, Thomas is the man behind the um, the business. He started everything. And Sonor, Sonor um, is now part of the business, his wife. They've got two young kids as well. And she's um, she's from a corporate background, um, used to work for Costa to look at their creative like experiences within the shops and everything. So she used to design like the layout, really cool. But now she's part of Thomas Cookie Co. So you have got here a lotus biscoff brookie cup and you've got a layer of cookie you've got brownie you've got lotus biscuits a biscoff is basically like a caramel spiced biscuit speculoos is the other way of kind of describing it so it's biscoff or lotus um and then you've got biscoff spread inside extra milk chocolate and um, these guys use you know british butter local free range eggs organic flour um and really lovely, lovely um, family company, and that's Thomas Cookie Co. Yum. Right, last one. I saved this to last because it's a bit spicy. Um, I always try not to put too many really hot things, but if you've got a problem with too much hot, mix it with mayo, maybe put it with some yogurt, um, but this is the Sauce Shops Honey Sriracha Drizzle and it's really lovely. Um, so sriracha is an aged or fermented chili, um, red like jalapeno chili um, sauce, um, and then this has got 35% honey, so really sweet as well. So really good drizzled onto like fried chicken, wings, um, put with cheese, put it on pizza, um, dip prawn toast or anything like any wontons, that kind of thing into it. Or imagine, I don't know, you're rather than, you know, like your sweet and sour chicken balls or something like that would be really good in this. And obviously put on noodles with rice, anything kind of um, with a kind of oriental vibe as well. Um, so love this one. Sauce Shop as well. I've uh, followed their journey from the beginning. They actually won a bursary probably back in 2015, I think it was, um, with the BBC Good Food Show. It was a project I used to manage. And um, it was, you know, in their very early days. And so we awarded them with um, like a package to come to the BBC Good Food Show. Um, and they've grown and grown. They're based in Nottingham. They're also available. Um, their distribution is really good. So you should be able to find them in Asda and Morrison's, I think. Um, this one's won Great Taste Awards, two star, which is um, quite hard to get. So... They're doing really well and they also do some like cooking sauces as well so have a look at their website they do quite a good off few offers and like um lots of different things i think you'll struggle to choose what to buy the cherry bourbon barbecue sauce is also really good um cool so that's your last one i hope you've enjoyed that whirlwind tour of your products if you do want to go a bit deeper have a look at the live guide of tasting it's nearly two hours long though i think i was chatting a little bit too much um and find the karma tea co 
Cornish Seaberry and Louise's Honey's um, little sections. I'll upload them as soon as I can so you can kind of get to know them as well. Um, thanks very much for joining me. Um, if you've liked the tasting box and the experience, please do post about it on social media so more people can know about it um, and we can help these small food and drink producers get their products out to more people. Thank you very much and uh, happy tasting.